Hi everyone and thanks for joining. I wanted to make a quick video on how you can use Blue Prism to automate a simple task like launching a website, navigating to a page that might have uh, a form fill and pick list and some information. Typically uh, com companies have uh, that web page under contact us or help where you would enter your uh, name, your email address and maybe select some things from a pick list or check some check boxes. For the purpose of this demonstration I'm going to use the Blue Prism Portal website and there's a link, there's a hyperlink we'll get to in a minute on how you could sign up for the Blue Prism Portal. Enter your username and, and email address and things of that nature. So we'll use that website. Um, we're going to go through uh, how we would construct the automation using Blue Prism. <laughs> because it is a, an interlock with applications and technology, we're going to use Object Studio. So I'm in Studio at the Object uh, portion of Studio, and I'm going to just create something in my default group. So I'm just going to right-click uh, in my default group, create an object. Um, I'm just going to call this BP Portal, just something simple that I could keep track of it later on. I'll click Next and then finish. And I've created the first um, object we'll use uh, for this demonstration. If I double click, I'll open it up. There's not much in there at the present time, but we will um, tell Blue Prism how we want to interact with the technology here. So I'll go to Application Modeler and I'll keep the name BP Portal. Um, this will be a browser-based application using Internet Explorer. So I'll click Next. It's a browser that is launched from an executable file. I'll click Next. And that is, in fact, the path to Internet Explorer that's installed on my system. So I'll click Next. Now, the URL I've already copied to my buffer, so I'll just Control-V. And sure enough, HTTPS portal.blueprism.com. I'll click Next. And I'll just take the defaults for now, and I'll come back and change anything if the website gets wonky or anything. But let's just take the defaults for now. I'll click Next and Finish. So uh, we've created our first object uh, for this automation. If I click on uh, BP Portal, it's got the name, it's got the path into Internet Explorer, and it's got the URL that I want to get to. Let's uh, click Launch, and Blue Prism will launch the website. Let me just toggle so we'll have Blue Prism on the screen at the same time as the website. I'm just going to move Blue Prism Application Modeler over to the left, and we'll look at the web page on the right. So the first thing I want to do here, I want to, so what I want to have the, uh, the automation do is launch the website. I want to click this uh, hyperlink, which is sign up here. So uh, let's create an element for that. Uh, the first element I'll create, I'll just call it sign up. So sign up. I'll click the Blue Prism Identify button, which will engage Blue Prism's spy mode. And notice it's IE HTML mode because it recognizes that I'm using Internet Explorer and it's an HTML uh, web page. If I mouse over anything on the web page, Blue Prism will highlight it with this green border that um, I would then select and tell Blue Prism what I mean by that sign up that I just uh, created for the element. It's this hyperlink here. I'm going to control left click and back into Blue Prism application modeler and look at all the information it was able to capture, all the rich uh, information, a digital fingerprint if you will, by interrogating the presentation layer of the application. If I click highlight, we'll see that in fact Blue Prism understands that those attributes that we've collected do in fact line up to the sign up here hyperlink. Let me click the sign up here hyperlink because the first thing I want to do is launch the website, then click the hyperlink. Now we get to the secondary page where you're asked to create an account. So let me just slide application modeler over because I want to get access to these other elements here. One thing I notice on the web page is these elements are very similar in size and shape. When I construct the, the object for these elements, when I construct uh, they're all uh, very similar, so email address and username and organization, it'll be the same. I'll just do the first two, and if I scroll down further, there's a drop-down pick list for country code. So let me do that. So I'll go back into Application Modeler. I'll add another element for email address, so I'll just call this one email. I'll click the Blue Prism Identify button, Engage Spy Mode, and this is the box I want for email address. I'll control left click. We captured a lot of good information. I'll click Highlight to make sure Blue Prism understands what I'm talking about. I'll add another element now for username. I'll click the identify button and here's the box I want to use for username. And again, I could I could continue down and create elements for all of these, but I really you, know, you guys get the uh, point in doing so. So let's go down to country. I'll add an element for country. I want to pick my country from the list. I'll click identify. This time I want Blue Prism to identify. We know that it's a, it's a drop down, it's a pick list. That's okay with Blue Prism. I'll just control left click and identify what this is. I'll highlight it to make sure we understand what it is. Let's look at some of the data sets that are here for country. Um, I want to look at this. Notice that uh, as we go through the automation, I'll need to pick the one that I want to use, which of course is towards the bottom, United States of America. I will notice that the one I want to pick for this automation, it's all in caps and there's a space between each word. Um, 
let's uh, go back into application modeler. I also want to point out that if you notice, if I scroll down for country on the value attribute, it's not checked, but if I click here, I can see that Blue Prism was able to capture all the valid data uh, from the drop down pick list, which will be good for data validation if I go through the automation in a few moments and I start building this out. If I put something that's not valid from this pick list, Blue Prism will identify and say, hold on, it's not an element in the pick list and so on. I'll show you that feature as well. So that's um, pretty much it. I've created some elements uh, for the automation. I don't need the website any longer. I don't need application modeler any longer. I'm going to click OK and save what I've created. Let's go into Object Studio and create this, uh, this automation again very briefly, very quickly, just to show you the uh, capabilities of Blue Prism to, uh, um, to, to launch and interact with a website. So the first thing I want to do in this automation is launch the website. So I'll drag over a Navigate stage. When I drag over a Navigate stage, if I double click on it, I'm going to give it a, a name called Launch Website. I'll drag over BP Portal as the element, and the action is launch. So I'll launch the website. So far, so good. Because I'm launching a website and systems could vary in their performance over the course of the day, I want to make sure because I want to make sure the website does in fact come up because the rest of the automation depends on the website launching properly. I'll drag over an intelligent wait state unique to Blue Prism, and let me just bring it out over here. Uh, stretch it out and so the intelligent wait state will say if I double click and open it up we want to wait for Blue Prism Portal website make sure the document loads and we'll give it uh, the, well take the default which is five seconds so I think that should be plenty of time for the uh, the website to load we'll wait for the document to load uh, otherwise we'll time out and then I, I'll just throw an exception in here as well and um, the exception would be uh, that the web page was too slow. Uh, what I'll do is I'll type it in in a minute. I do want to call out that as I'm building this in Blue Prism Object Studio, notice at the top it's keeping track of the errors um, as I'm building it. Obviously, I haven't linked things together. If I click on this one, it's going to say the expression is blank for the exception. So let me c complete that in so that I don't forget about that later on. And again, so the people following up behind me, looking at this automation for phase two or for whatever they want to do, they can quickly see what I was thinking as I constructed this automation. So I'll type in the exception uh, text, and that'll be uh, web page did not load. Just correct my spelling. Okay, let's start linking these together launch the website, wait for it to load. If not, we get an exception. If the web page does load, I want to drag over a navigate stage because if the web page loads, what I want to do is I want to click the sign up link. So I'll give this navigate stage a name called click sign up. I'll drag over the element for sign up and I'll give it the action click center because I want to click on that hyperlink. Okay, so far so good. After I click sign up, the next page, I'm going to write some information to it. So I'll drag over a write stage. Notice in Blue Prism, I could have one write stage, but I could interact with several elements. I know that I'm going to use one for uh, email address and my username that I want to propose. So I'm going to call this, uh, this write stage, I'm going to call it write um, email and username. Okay. And for the email, um, if I click on this calculator icon, I could um, launch uh, Blue Prism's Expression Chooser. We've got a rich selection of logic and, and other, other ways we could construct expressions, very similar to what you might be familiar with in Excel. Uh, for the purpose of just the uh, email address, I could just type it in freestyle, just scott.price at blueprism.com. What this is saying to Blue Prism in a write stage, I'm going to write that value to that element. So what we've identified as email, I'll write scott.price at blueprism.com. For username, the same thing. I'll just give myself a username that I'd like to propose. Hopefully it's available, scott.price. And I'll click OK. So in, write, in one write stage, I'm interacting with two elements that I created previously. OK, so far so good. Now the other thing that I want to do is I want to pick the country on the pick list. So that's a navigate stage. I'll drag over a navigate stage. And I'll call this select country. I'll drag over the country element. And notice that the country, because the way it was defined as an element, the actions change based on what the element was defined as. So I notice that it's uh, select item, so it's a list. So I can select item from the list. 
And what I want to do is I want to, uh, the item text that I want to use, I want to type in, and it's all caps, I'm putting my caps locks on, but maybe I'm going to fat finger it or something like that. So United States of America. I just want to show you that Prism could use some data validation because this is in fact not something that's on the pick list of countries that should be uh, permissible and we're not just writing data over a field we're actually picking from the pick list um, intelligently I'll click OK and, and just we'll watch through this as it goes through the automation I'll bring over my end stage right here I'll link everything together Let me just um, shrink this up. I want to have this on uh, on screen the same time the web page comes up so we could look at how Blue Prism uh, automates the website in tandem as it runs through the website. So what I'll do here is um, now I'm going to, uh, assuming we did everything correctly, and I know country is, is going to bomb, but let's run through it now and I'll show you how Blue Prism could just quickly put these elements together and launch the website and navigate to the web page and fill out some information. So let's run it. It's going to launch the website. I'm going to pull up Blue Prism in tandem with the website as it's coming up. We have our intelligent wait state, so the web page did in fact come up. Click the sign up button. On the next page, we're going to write email and username. Notice email and username. Now the country, it's going to give me an error on. And sure enough, no child item exists with the specified text. So let's go in and fix that. Let's just first confirm that nothing was picked for country. See, it still says select a value. So if I was Again, um, revising this in Studio, which is where I would be to revise the automation, I would go back in and I would make sure that, in fact, this is not a valid item. Let's go and fix that. United States of America. I'll click OK. And I could pick up from where it left off and I could just click Run. And let's go back to the website to see that, in fact, we did pick United States of America. So that's a quick demonstration of how we can show you how Blue Prism could uh, be used to uh, create an automation for a website, uh, launch a website, click on some uh, uh, hyperlinks, uh, write some data to some elements, and uh, pick items from a pick list. Uh, if you enjoy this video, please feel free to reach out, and we'll uh, construct some other videos on other advanced topics shortly. Thank you.